Hello everybody. Um, so in this video we're gonna continue the topic of distillation. Um, in the two or three previous videos we were talking about the shortcut uh, distillation columns where we can do um, like simple calculations to get estimates of the outputs of the distillation column in case of doing uh, or working in the design um, mode or the design module which was the um, here was the uh, the STWU column and we did the opposite by giving the specifications of the column in the rating mode um, uh, column which was uh, the ISTL and now in this uh, video we're gonna talk about the rigorous method and we mentioned before that there, uh, there are differences between working with the shortcut method and with the rigorous method um, and the we, we said that the rigorous column will give us um, more accurate results and is going to give us more details about the column from the inside um, and uh, that's why we need to provide more information uh, from the givens that we know and from the uh, outputs from the shortcut as we will see in this call in this video so the um, the column that we're gonna use is the rat track we have already talked about the rat track column before um, in a uh, previous video in the introduction uh, I'm not sure it was this file no it's, it, it wasn't this file um, anyway so we, we already talked about the red track and maybe just for um, refreshment of our information we mentioned that the red track can be used for simple distillation for absorption for absorption with the boiler in, in, in kind of many um, many applications uh, that do not have like special cases so uh, that's what we're gonna do in this video we're gonna use the red track <clears throat> again we are using uh, or we're gonna solve the same uh, problem uh, that we uh, we uh, we had before or we were solving before the styrene ethyl benzene mixture um, and we're gonna call this the rigorous column so that we can differentiate between it and the shortcut columns um, we have to connect two uh, outputs, one as the bottom product. And by the way, we have here uh, three outputs, one here and one there and one optional here. Um, if we, we use, because this is important, I didn't mention it in the previous videos, that um, the, the connection will affect the choice of the condenser type. So um, if we have, uh, for instance, a total condenser, then this is... Uh, the, the only output stream is going to be a liquid stream so this is what we're gonna have here and it says liquid distillate and it's required if distillate vapor fraction is smaller than one uh, if we are using partial condenser uh, or in case of using a total condenser and so if we're, we're using a total condenser only this is required if we are using a partial condenser with vapor fraction smaller than one we have to connect this stream this has to be connected if we are using uh, uh, vapor distillate. Um, in case of, of using partial condenser with total vapor or partial uh, li uh, liquid and partial vapor. In case of using total condenser, we cannot connect this stream. This is, uh, in case of having two liquid streams or two liquid phases, then we, we, we can connect this. But in, if, if I am using partial condenser and I'm connecting the, the stream this way then it's gonna give us an error because we should have a vapor stream connected here as well uh, so this is something that you need to keep in mind so I'm gonna call it the rigorous top and um, this is gonna be the rigorous bottom so regarding the connections we are we are now done and now we can open the column and see what we have so the first thing that we have here is uh, it's saying that the, the calculation type uh, it's either equilibrium or rate based and, and we need to like take a few minutes to talk about this in details just to understand what's the difference so this is uh, what we do in case of doing the trade to trade calculations for any stage and just for the case of some or the sake of simplicity I'm using the reboiler because it's a simple stage um, the equations that we solve are the equilibrium relation which is y equals k multiplied by x and uh, the material or the mass balance the total mass balance the component mass balance and the energy balance equation so these are the equations that we are solving together and 
by taking a look at the equations, these three equations are totally fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but there is something about this equation, which means or, or the, the point here is that we assume that the two streams coming from the same stage, Y, R, and X, W, are in equilibrium. And this is what we have here. It's the equilibrium relation. So I'm assuming that this is an equilibrium stage. And this is a very, very theoretical case because in, in, in order for us to have uh, 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 like uh, two streams coming in equilibrium, I have to leave, uh, it might not be a problem here, but it, for, for the stages here where we have liquid and vapor phases uh, having mass transfer, uh, we have to keep them uh, in contact for a long time uh, at a very large surface area so that we can make sure that the the mass transfer happened till the maximum uh, value that we can we can achieve and 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 this is very very difficult because we have as as we approach the equilibrium the driving force gets weaker and it means that we need to keep them for longer and longer time so this needs infinite time to achieve this equation so this is an assumption that we make that this is an equilibrium stage the other option is to do the pure mass transfer calculations, which means that I'm going to do calculations on each stage. Uh, I'm going to calculate Reynolds number, then I'm going to calculate Prandtl number, uh, not Prandtl number, but Nusselt number, and uh, uh, I mean the Sherwood number and Schmidt number, and from them I have to get the mass transfer coefficient, and from the mass transfer coefficient and the area of the bubbles, I have to calculate the rate of, of, of mass transfer, and from this I can calculate the, the the output of the stage, which is the X and Y from the stage based on the detailed mass transfer calculations. And it's very clear that this is going to be very tough and very difficult to do for each stage separately. So it's, it's not kind of thing that we can do easily. And that's why the, the assumption of having equilibrium stage is the easier method to do the calculations. But when we do this, we're, we're assuming something which is not going to happen. That's why we have to do something to correct that, which is the um, efficiency of the, uh, of the stage. So I have, or, or distillation efficiency. So I have this distillation efficiency term to take into account that this assumption is not right. And I have to do something to get outputs which are realistic, not not theoretical so um, uh, this is what I just mentioned we need infinite time to achieve this uh, this uh, uh, mass transfer um, and the efficiency can be calculated based on two methods one which is the column efficiency which means that I'm not looking at each state stage separately I'm looking at the column as a whole so I know that the theoretical stages are for instance 10 and I know the column efficiency as a whole is like 50% so I need to use 20 stages to achieve the uh, the separation that I will achieve with 10 theoretical stages. So this is what I, I have here. This is the equation. The number of actual stages equal the number of theoretical stages. This should be S. Uh, the number of theoretical stages divided by the efficiency of the column. So this, this is very simple. You're doing everything uh, as if you're dealing with a theoretical uh, column uh, or theoretical stages. And just the number of stages is what you're going to use to calculate the number of actual stages. This might not be very, very accurate. Uh, and that's why we use the other thing, which is the stage efficiency. Um, by doing this, I am recalculating the vapor uh, uh, the vapor stream composition out uh, coming out of each stage uh, based on the efficiency of the stage and the theoretical output of the stage. Um, so there are two types of efficiency of a stage efficiencies. The first is the vaporization. But before going into this, I need to uh, make sure that you understand this this photo here. So this uh, this is a stage. This is a stage. This is a stage. From each stage, there is a liquid and vapor phase coming of them. This is liquid and vapor coming from each stage. And each stream is named according to uh, the stage it's coming from. So this is stage number N. So this is Y, N, and X, N. This is stage N minus 1. This is Y, N minus 1, X, N minus 1, and so on. So the Y, N, and X, N are the two things that are the two streams I am uh, using to do my calculations. So 
the stage efficiency is assumed or, or is used to calculate the y i which is y coming out of here divided by the y star which is the theoretical uh, value which is the k multiplied by x i so this is y i divided by k i uh, uh, multiplied by x i for stage n i is the component i so this is what i'm doing so what i'm going to do is i'm doing my equilibrium calculations easily or as, as i'm used to do and from the stage efficiency i am getting rid of this y and i'm using this y as the actual y coming of the stage so this is calculated from the y n star multiplied by the stage efficiency is going to give us the y i um, so this is how we calculate the stage efficiency based on the vaporization efficiency or the method of vaporization efficiency the second which is the most famous method uh, it's the murphy efficiency uh, it's kind of taking into account that there is effect of different stages on the composition so it's based on the difference between the compositions so i'm um, the murphy efficiency is the yi minus yi uh, for n and n minus one so this minus this this y minus this y divided by the actual y minus y n plus one uh, uh, I mean n plus one I'm sorry it's this so this is the equation again the y star is the k multiplied by x i uh, n I know all of these terms but this is the only term that I don't know so I can calculate y um, n from the knowledge of the Murphy efficiency and the other terms that we, I have here we're not going to do anything manually here but I just want you to understand the concept because this is gonna uh, be something that we are gonna come uh, and, and or we're gonna see in, in a few minutes. So uh, this is what we mean by equilibrium and rate based. And of course, if we choose equilibrium, we're we're like so saving some uh, ourselves some time. If we just take a look at the the column, which is the uh, rigorous column, I have here the uh, the the. Uh, things that I need to fill uh, so uh, if I if I go for the rate base then I see that uh, something here should be um, I'm not sure where was it but there, there would be something about the uh, mass transfer and the uh, the the uh, internals of the column that I have to define so that it, it can do the mass transfer calculations anyway so uh, to save some time, I'm gonna use the uh, the data that I. It's not for saving time. This is what I have to do. I have to get the outputs from the uh, shortcut column. So for the shortcut column, I think it was this. Uh, nope, it was the block the um, short the uh, the results. So I'm gonna use all the results that I got from here. The reflux ratio that I used was six. Um, so I'm gonna move this here just to be easy for me. Oops. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm using the number of stages here was uh, 41. Of course, I I cannot use fractions the same way I did in the shortcut uh, rating column. So I'm gonna use 41. And this is something that you have to notice that if you have these up and down arrows, then you have to use a whole number. You cannot use fractions. The condenser is a total condenser reboiler. There are different types of reboilers, kettle and thermal siphon, uh, but uh, I'm gonna use kettle. It's the most uh, common type. The valid phases are the vapor liquid. Here we have like some some uh, options here that kind of confusing uh, if you're not like uh, used to them. So you have the vapor liquid and, and, and this is what comes in your mind that it's a vapor liquid column. There are no other option, but it is uh, assuming that there are two phases. A vapor phase and a liquid phase there is a vapor liquid liquid if you have two liquid phases um, not just one phase uh, it can be an aqueous or uh, organic but it, it's it's I think this is what is we, we need we mean by the free water condenser that if you have vapor organic and pure water but in, in this case uh, it's like the liquid liquid extraction you have two phases the, the these two phases are not miscible or are not totally miscible and the compositions are different so this is different from having aqueous and organic phase this is when we use the aqueous and organic phase and in this case it's only in the condenser 
you can do this for any stage which means that you are applying this for the whole column assuming that you have a vapor organic and pure water phase uh, you can have dirty water phase the same two options uh, but dirty water means that it has some impurities it's not pure water so it's not dealing with the water phase as a pure water phase um, so here I'm going to use vapor liquid uh, for the conversions it gives us some options the standard is uh, when we use the two phase columns uh, you don't need to uh, do anything else uh, for the petroleum as we mentioned before you have boiling ranges and and stuff like that so in this case you can use this option if you have non ideal liquid like uh, two uh, two liquids or, or, or liquid and vapor phases which are not uh, behaving ideally or are far from the ideal behavior by the ideal behavior we mean that the the envelope of the vapor liquid doesn't take this this uh, this shape um, so it can maybe very close together or maybe wide at some part and, and narrow at other part so or, or may have different or, or the, the miscibilities will will will, uh, will, uh, will get, get different uh, or flip um, so in this case we can go for this uh, for azeotropic when we have azeotropes like water ethanol system and, and many systems that are uh, azeotropic uh, mixtures for cryogenic when we have very low uh, temperature like the air separation you can go for this option and this this is how it's gonna converge this is uh, how we can consider the system converged um, now we have to uh, define two specifications uh, from this big list, uh, it's uh, either the distillate rate, the bottoms rate, the reflux rate, the boil up rate. Uh, the, 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 so, so we know the distillate and the bottom rate. So the flow rate of the top and bottom product, the, the reflux rate is the flow rate of the um, of the uh, reflux stream. The boil up rate is the uh, flow rate of the vapor stream coming from the reboiler back to the column. The boil up ratio is the ratio of the boil up to the feed, the, the, the feed to the reboiler. We have the distillate to feed ratio, the bottom ratio, that the duties for the condenser or the reboilers. Um, I personally like to, I can, of course, if, if, I, if I look at the results here, I can find the distillate rate and the, the bottom rates. I know the flow rates. Um, or if I cannot find this here, I can find it in the stream results. But I, I prefer to use the ratios, actually. Uh, there are two big advantages of going for the, the ratios. So I, I would like to go for the distillate to feed ratios. Uh, first, because the range is narrow, it's from 0 to 1, and, and actually for, for the solution column, it's not going to be that wide either. Uh, it, it's going to be from like point, it's going to be around 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.7, something around that. So the, the range is narrow, so if you give an assumption which is not very close, it's, it's easy to get closer to the actual value that you need to go for. Um, so it's not the case if you put the distillate rate the rate is wide according to the flow rate of the feed so it's, it's not as easy to converge as going for the ratios the other thing is that the ratio does not have uh, uh, does not have units so it's gonna be more convenient to use uh, or to make sure that you don't have any issues with the units uh, when you go for the uh, ratios that's why I personally like to go for the ratios uh, the ratio that we had here was 0.5857, so this is the number that I'm going to use here, 0.5857. And for the reflux ratio, uh, you can go for reflux ratio, reflux rate, uh, some of them or the rest of the of the things here. Uh, so the reflux ratio was 6, this is the number that we used. So now this tab is totally, um, totally specified for the streams. Um, it, it automatically fills this as the top and the bottom based on the number of stages that I have. So I, I the, the top product is the stage number one, which is the top stage, and the bottom uh, stage is the last stage. It's the, the bottom of the column. So it puts the bottom product as stage number 41 and the top product as stage number one. Um, and the only thing here is the feed stage. This is the thing that I have to define here. And of course, if I have any side products, uh, I have to connect them and uh, they will show up here as one thing here, uh, as, the, as one product here, but you have to pick the stage for this side product. Uh, the feed stage here was 18.34. So we can uh, we can go for it's more than 18, so I can do 19. 
But here it says that it, it where is the feed uh, going? It's either above stage or on stage or vapor or liquid. So if it's liquid or vapor, it's it's kind of easy that the feed is totally vapor or it's total liquid. But the on and above stage is kind of uh, confusing a little bit. Uh, the difference between on stage and above stage is that you have um, the spacing between the trays like this. Um, the feed can be fed somewhere above the stage, which means that the feed will fall from up to the stage. So there will be some mass transfer coming above here uh, in this in this uh, journey from the feed uh, inlet to the tray. Uh, so it's like coming from this stage and going down. So it's it's mixing with the feed from the, uh, or, or the, the, uh, the, the downcomer from the top stage. Or if you say it's uh, on the stage, so it's going directly on here. So it's not gonna be assumed to be uh, performing any mass transfer between the stage and here so it's going to be totally directly mixed with the liquid on the stage so I, i'm i'm gonna choose above stage uh, because it was not 19 like pure 19 in in the uh, in the shortcut for the pressures i know that i have the the pressure of the top stage was um, 55 tours uh, so this is the value here. You can put the second stage pressure. I don't know why specifically the second stage, but this is the option that we have. Uh, you have here the, or you have some options to either define the top and the bottom stages. So this is like what we did before. Keep in mind here that this is uh, kind of misleading things. That uh, you you can put the pressure drop for the rest of the column, either as the stage pressure drop or the column pressure drop. Uh, I know that the column, uh, the, the bottom stage has the pressure of 105, so the total pressure loss is 50, 60 tours. Uh, but keep in mind, if you choose the stage pressure drop and you mean it's the column pressure drop, it's gonna be a disaster. We have 40 stages, more than 40 stages, and you have 60 tours per stage if you put the number here. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a, a big problem, and it's a very common mistake. So please keep in mind that you choose the right option here. You can choose this, or you can choose the pressure profile that you 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 say I have stage number one, the pressure is this, and pressure number two, is, the pressure is this, and you put the profile of the pressures, or you can uh, put the section pressure drop that you mean that I have a section starting from this stage to this stage, and the pressure drop is this much. So these are the options. Um, I would go for this because I don't have any information about the uh, stage pressure drop or the profile in the column. Um, the condenser is kind of similar to what we have before. You can either choose that it's uh, subcooled. Uh, if, if you have a subcooling that's not saturated liquid, you can give the temperature um, assumed. If you have utilities, you, we mentioned that before, you can define the utility here. The same for the reboiler. Uh, but the reboiler, you have uh, like options about the shape of the reboiler, the configuration. Is it like this or like this? It's kind of something that's more detailed about how the liquid is going from the reboiler um, and flowing into the uh, the bottom stage and how the product is is, is got. Uh, so there are many configurations. If you know which one of them, you can you can pick whatever one that you want to go for. Anyway, so we're, we're now talking about the basics, so we're not gonna, gonna go for a uh, lot of details, uh, more than that. Um, I, I don't like to make the video very long as well, so I'm, I'm gonna stop like in, in, in with, with this level of, of details. Uh, we can go for more if uh, in, the, in, the pre in the next videos, inshallah. So now we can run the file and we can take a look at what we have here uh, as the outputs. So we have no problems, the results are here. And now let's see what kind of results we are getting out of the column. So for the results here, it's saying that we, the, the temperature of the top product and the bottom product, the duties, uh, the distillate rate and the reflux rate. So we, we, we have like a, a quite uh, good information. Uh, the balance is not gonna add much because the inlet equals the output, so it's the difference is almost zero. So we have we have no problem with that. Here is the point that is uh, important. Uh, we mentioned before that the recovery of ethyl benzene in the top product must be 99.5. Here it's less. 
and the recovery of styrene monomer should be 2.5%. Here it's higher. So it means that there, there is some discrepancy between uh, what we have here and what we got in the shortcut method. And this is totally ac accepted and it's totally expected actually because we, we are doing now the detailed calculations which will definitely give more uh, accurate results and this is what we expect from here. Uh, we, we need to do something so that the column in the rigorous mode will give us the output that we need. It's not just this. Uh, and this is what we're going to do in the next video. Uh, so keep in mind that this is the topic of the next video. Now let's, let's look at the profiles because the profiles are, are, are nice, very, very nice. So it's going to give you the, the profiles of the heat duties, uh, the liquid flow rate, the vapor flow rate, and the enthalpies, um, many things. And the point that I, I believe is very important is the, um, the compositions. Uh, because the compositions are very, very uh, informative. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plot this so that we can see what the uh, outputs that we have. So for the stage, uh, the x-axis of the stage, I want to take a look at all of them. And let's see what we have. So it's now giving us the plot of the uh, flow rate of uh, each one of them. Uh, uh, sorry, I, this is the yeah, the number of stages, so it's along the column, and it's it's kind of uh, clear from the the plot that uh, the y axes are not the same. So I need to unify the y axis so that I, uh, of course, the the for the NC17 is is clear. Uh, this is the feed stage. It it's here and 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 now it's totally coming out of the column. So this is what we would expect. Uh, but for the other two, I need to unify the y-axis for all of them so I can see them. Now for C17, I can see nothing because the values are very, very small, so it's not going to be a problem. But for this, I can see that um, the, 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 the composition of uh, styrene monomer at stage 1 is minimum, and it's going to increase, increase, increase till it reaches the maximum value. The, in, in some cases, when the feed is not, uh, is not fed in the right place, you can see that the line is kind of broken. So it, there, there would be a very change, a big change in the curvature at the feed stage. So the feed stage here is 18 or it's 19. I cannot see any problem here. The line looks very smooth. So I, it, it, it kind of tells that the feed location is, is suitable. It's good. Uh, if you have a big change in the... Uh, in the curvature of the curve, then you need to uh, reconsider the feed location. Um, in some cases, you'd see that the curve would be kind of flat at some points for some stages. Uh, if this happens, then you have some stages that are not achieving any separation. Uh, when you have the line horizontal like this, then you have to uh, decrease the number of stages because the stages are not enough. So. Um, uh, th that's why the, the, this curve is very informative um, because it tells a lot of information about the performance of the curve. Um, so I'm going to stop now. In the next video, we will see how we can fix the, uh, the specs of the column or, or make sure that the column is achieving the required specs that we are uh, targeting with the column. Um, so um, I'll stop here and I'll see you, see you in the next video, inshallah. Goodbye.